Good morning. Wow, it's great to be able to greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor George Rowe from the Chatwin Gospel Tabernacle right here in Chatwin. And um, our church is actually going through a painting update this, uh, this weekend. And so consequently, I'm sharing the word from the Baptist Church. Imagine the Pentecostals and the Baptists are going to get along together long enough for me to preach the word today. And a special thank you to Pastor Bill Evans, and it's just great. Yesterday, I received an encouraging phone call from one of my board members, and he said, Pastor George, I've been just thinking about you, and I want to encourage your heart, and I have a Bible verse I want to share with you. And so he shared this verse with me from Timothy, and I really appreciate it. Knowing that we were going to do this taping today, here is the word he shared. Preach the word of God urgently at all times. Whenever you get the chance, in season, out of season, when it is convenient, and when it is not convenient. Correct and rebuke your people when they need it. Encourage them to do right, and all the time feeding them patiently with God's word. And, and I trust that as I share with you today some very simple truths from the Word of God that it will have meaning in your heart and in your life and your, in your spirit. I'm going to stay away from deep theological stuff and be very elementary today and just talk to you from my heart. It goes without question, of course, that we live in difficult days and difficult times and I don't need to go through all of this COVID-19 stuff with you. But we are adjusting and we are adjust, uh, readjusting almost every day uh, of our lives to deal with this COVID. But today, as I speak from my heart into your heart, I, I kind of want you to understand that the Bible today is my source of authority. And based on the authority of God's word, I wanted to be an encouragement to you. And so what is it God would have me say today? I, I was reading in the book of Job, a Bible verse that kind of got hidden away there in another translation. And in Job, it says, those who forget God have no hope. And I thought, wow, to have no hope, not to believe or to forget that there's a God can definitely leave a person in a precarious situation. And I wondered in my own spirit, because I experienced child conversion, and I wondered in my own spirit when I read that verse, that if I do forget God, if, if I allow God not to be a part of my everyday life, then according to the word of God, I am really living without hope. And then very quickly, I go back to the Psalms, and, and the psalmist said, it is important that you put your hope in God. And so my encouraging word to you today is very simple. If you forgot God and thus you have no hope, I would encourage you today to put your hope and your faith in Almighty God. And in fact, Proverbs tells us every word of God is flawless. And God is a shield to those who take refuge in him. I think that's absolutely and totally awesome that in God, I find refuge, I find safety, I find comfort, I find rest, even in the midst of the storms and the battles of life. When I speak from the word of God, I always think that the Word of God is speaking to me and is very directional. For instance, the Word says, Your Word is a lamp to my feet, and it is a light on my path. And, and, and I love the Word of God. And, and I've said on occasion that the Word of God is the heart of God written on paper. 
Now, before you quickly turn your channel to something else, just pay attention for just a couple of more minutes. I want to share something today that I believe will be a blessing. There are a number of very simple truths that we need to be re reminded of. And if you're a born-again Christian, or if you have never been introduced to Jesus Christ, the first truth I want you to understand today is this. It's a simple truth. It's a profound truth. It's a mind-changing truth. And the truth is this. God loves you. Now, doesn't that sound awesome? God loves you. And that love is kind of capsulized in, in John 3.16. Uh, you probably learned this Bible verse when you were in, in Sunday school. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Isn't it awesome? And it is an agape love. It's a Greek word which means love that is unconditional. You don't have to measure up. You don't have to be a special person. You don't have to have status. But God loves you indiscriminately with an agape, unconditional love. Please understand that. And in fact, Paul, in talking about the love of God, reminds us in Romans that God actually pours out his love into our hearts pours it out. So whatever we are going through today, I want you to take a deep, deep breath, then excel with the unprecedented shout, God loves me. I am loved by the creator of the entire universe. And that ought to make you feel really good. The other thing I want you to understand today is this. God is always with you. God doesn't just say, I love you, and then leave us in a vacuum. God doesn't say, I love you, and then leave us on our own to kind of crawl through life and make the best of it that we possibly can. God is with us under all conditions and situations in life. I, I realize that this COVID-19 have caused a lot of, a lot of heartache and, and a lot of heartbreak. And, and even as I stand here today, I think of the number of seniors in this beautiful country that have been negatively impacted and COVID have taken them from us. And, and I'm reminded of, of the psalmist David when he said, and talking about God being with us, he said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Today, God is with you. And he said to Jacob way back in the book of Genesis, and God's promise to Jacob is God's promise to us today. He said, I am with you, and I will watch over you wherever you go. And so today, God is with you. God is watching over you. And Jesus said, for where two or three come together in my name, there am I with them. And so you can excel again with a shout of praise. God is with me. God loves me. God is with me. And that ought to cheer your heart today and make you feel real good on the inside, real good on the outside as we reflect the love of God. Another important point we need to understand today amidst all the crises that we're going through is this. God is our provider. God is our provider. There's an old rabbi saying that goes something like this. He who has a loaf of bread in his basket but asks the question, what will I eat tomorrow? That man is a man of little faith. You know something? Jesus is something about food and tomorrow. He talks about clothing. He talks about the flowers of the field and being our provider 
Here's what Jesus said. It's really interesting. Just listen to him. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Just look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. God is our provider. And Jesus goes on to say, Are you not much more valuable than they? And who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? Listen to this. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow. They don't labor, they don't spin. And yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all the splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? I love the way he finishes here. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? You see, God is always with us. Remember when this COVID-19 crisis began, it began with a sense of hoarding. Everything from toilet paper to T-bone steak. And, and people were fearful they, they would run out of the essentials. And, and, and having an ample, or a, a, a ample supply would be a prudent thing to do. And, and some people took a real beating because they were overbuying and overstocking. They were hoarding. And isn't it amazing that now, well into the pandemic, we have so much food available that our suppliers are thinking of getting rid of it or different government agencies are doing their best to salvage it through financial initiatives. It's interesting. Jesus said, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink. And so six weeks ago, there was a great concern about even food. And today we have more than enough. The other thing I want you to understand today is that God's peace is available to everybody. I've been sharing the word for 50 years now, and I've met a lot of people over the 50 years who've experienced utter turmoil and strife and a feeling of uncomfortableness and lostness in their spirit. Many of these folk have never been able to say to me, Pastor George, I am really at peace with God. I am at peace with myself. I am at peace with the world. I am at peace with my family. There is always a crisis that's going on within us. Well, I have good news for you today, ladies and gentlemen, that the peace of God is available to all of us today. In fact, in fact the, the psalmist said, I will lie down and sleep in peace, for you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Isn't it awesome that even during the day, at the end of the day, at the beginning of the next day, we can say, I am at peace. I love what the Apostle Paul wrote in Philippians. And, and the background is very simple here. Paul is in prison. And Paul realizes that his life will soon be taken from him. He had every reason on the planet to be concerned about his tomorrows. And yet rather than focusing upon himself, Paul writes to the little church at Philippi while he himself is in a Roman prison. And here is what Paul says to encourage the church. 
do not be anxious about anything. Come on now. Paul is in jail. Paul is about to be decapitated, and yet he is saying to the little church at Philippi, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And here's what happens. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The peace of God, which surpasses understanding, will guard your hearts. It's interesting to know that the word guard here is a military word, and it means to garrison, to protect, to keep you from the evil one. And so the peace of God is available to you today, and I'm so glad that I can stand on the authority of the Word of God because the Word of God is my source and tell you that you can have peace. Way back in the Old Testament, Isaiah said of God, you will, this is God, God will keep him in peace who put their trust in him. Awesome. There's a song the church sings sometimes, and it's a very encouraging one. And the chorus of that song goes something like this. There is peace in the midst of the storms of my life. There is an anchor. There is a rock to build my faith upon. Jesus Christ is my vessel, so I fear no alarm. He gives me peace in the midst of the storm. Are you troubled today? Are you really concerned? Are there upheavals? Are you dealing with issues that no one else seems to understand? The COVID is just an added extra crisis in your life and you need peace. You, you need to be able to go to bed at night and rest and rest well. You need to begin your day knowing that God is with you. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Please understand, without getting into a lot of deep, deep theology, I want you to know and understand and feel in your spirit that the peace of God is available to you today. Amen. And the last thought I want to share with you is this one. Perchance there may be folk listening today, and you have not had that personal relationship with Christ. Uh, you're living a good life. You live a good moral life ethical life. You may even go to church. You may even help your neighbor. You may be able to give to charities, and you feel real good within your heart, but you have never had a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Well, I have great news today, awesome news based on the authority of the Word of God, and here it is. God's redemption is for the whosoever. God loves the whosoever. Since the fall of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, God has extended his arms of love to bring people back into a relationship with the Father. And if you read the Bible at all, throughout the Old Testament, God used prophets and priests and kings. He used worship in the temple and the sacrifice of animals so that their blood would be a temporary covering for our sin because God wanted to bring fallen humanity back into a relationship with the Father. And God had chosen, because He's sovereign, God can do this. God chose blood to eradicate the sin of humankind. And yet in the Old Testament under the law, it didn't matter how many animals had been sacrificed. The blood of those animals could not remove the sin of people. He could cover it for a while, but couldn't really remove that. And the Bible does remind us that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. But you know something? The day came when sacrifices in themselves was not sufficient. 
worship in the temple in itself was not sufficient. Ceremonies in itself was not sufficient. And while the blood of bulls and goats could not take away our sin, God, in His great love, looked down through the eons of time, and on the horizon of an eastern sky, God saw an old rugged cross. And God knew in His heart, God knew in His spirit, that the day is going to come when His only Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, will die on a cross. And when He dies on that cross, the possibility of every humankind being redeemed by the blood would be now available. In fact, Paul put it this way, In Him, that is in Jesus, we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of of our sin according to the riches of His grace. And, and I come today as just a simple preacher from a little tiny church in a beautiful community in an outstanding province of British Columbia. And all this humble pastor can say to you is that God loves you. I can say God is with you. I want you to understand that God is our provider. God's peace is available to all. And God's redemption is for the whosoever. I just pray in my spirit right now that as you've listened to the word, that, that something that I might have said through the word will enter your spirit, enter your mind, into your heart. And help you understand that even though theologically we can't explain everything, we do know that God's love is for everybody. Well, thank you for tuning in, and uh, thank you for listening. And we're going to go to a bit of a bit of a little break now, a commercial break, if I if I want to call it that. And we have a special guest who's going to come and share a little story uh, for the children, uh, Brother Cliff Jeffrey is our youth coordinator, and uh, in fact, he's a pastor as well. And so I'm very grateful for the opportunity for him to come and share a story with the children. Again, thank you very much. God bless you. Have a great week, and we'll see you in a little while. God's blessings. Amen. In a town where bitter winters reign and the threat of cabin fever lurks in the shadows, one hero stands to abolish boredom and bring an entire region together. Armed with the powers of fun and community, they stand vigil every winter. Chet TV Bingo! The hero we didn't know we needed, but always wanted. Every Thursday at 7 p.m. Only on Chet TV. Hi everyone, it's good to be here today. I want to thank Pastor George for inviting me to bring kind of an object lesson uh, story for the kids. So this morning I actually picked up my flashlight and I uh, went to use my flashlight and I think you'll notice something about it. There's no light. So what do you think's wrong with it? Well, turns out there's no batteries. Without batteries, a flashlight is not very useful. But when you put in the batteries, see here if I can get these in. Oh, it already lit up. The flashlight becomes really useful. You know, batteries are used a lot nowadays. We use them in uh, our toys. I stole my granddaughter's book. We use them in flashlights. We use them in our cell phones. And if these batteries aren't in good condition, if they're not charged up, oh, I'll just turn that off. If they're not charged up, now my cell phone, I can plug it into the wall and plug a cord into it. 
and then I can charge it. They're kind of useless. And batteries actually brought something to my mind about God's Word. So I just want to take a look. And I'll look it up here. I've got a, a Bible app on my phone. It's 1 Corinthians 13. Some of you may be familiar with it. It's a passage about love. If I speak with human eloquence and angelic ecstasy, but don't love, I am nothing but the creaking of a rusty gate. If I speak God's word with power, revealing all his mysteries and making everything plain as a day, and if I have faith that says to the mountain, jump, and it jumps, but I don't love, I am nothing. You see, this phone without a battery is nothing. It's really not good for anything. This flashlight without a battery is kind of useless. Might as well get rid of it. Same with our toys. Without batteries, if they need batteries, they don't really have a function. Maybe it's a doorstop or something for parents to step on. But really what we need is love, is what the Bible tells us. And so the battery is kind of like love. We have to have it. Anything else we have, although how good it is, doesn't really matter unless we have love. My daughter, when our kids were little, used to always say to them, love each other, because my kids would fight as kids fight. Love each other. And that's an important and wise thing for us to remember, is just as God tells us that we need to love each other all the time. Let's just close in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness to us, for your grace, for your mercy. Lord, help us to love each other, especially in this time as the world is maybe a little different, a little confusing. Help us to love each other, to be kind to one another, to support each other, to encourage each other, to go out of our way just to be good to each other. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great day, everyone. This December, the Chetwin Communication Society made wonderful donations in the Peace Region. <laughs> Using our bingo funds, a total of $263,918 was donated to six organizations. And it gives me great pleasure to make this presentation. Yeah. No, thank you for what you do. I'd like to thank you for what you do in the community. It is great. Really good. All of us. You're more thing. than welcome. Glad to be able to do it. Thank you for me and my team. Well, you're more than welcome, and it's uh, it's something that is much needed. And thanks for the service you do. <laughs> Thank you. You're more than welcome. Thank you. It's a great pleasure to be able to do this. We're also thrilled to be awarding $75,000 in bursaries to post-secondary students. None of this would have been possible without Leo Sobolski, all of our staff, our mascot, and more importantly, you, our amazing bingo players. We would like to wish everyone happy bingo days and... Merry Christmas! <laughs>